I'm Liv. I'm 29 years old and I've been sexually harassed more times than I can count. It feels like a normal part of growing up in Aotearoa. The roast buster Joseph Bragging Park, about six woken six by a man as he raped right, four 15-year-old With girls. one in four Kiwis experiencing sexual assault, and usually before they turn 18, I guess that's true. We're inadvertently training up the next Me Too generation. In 2022, my old high school Avonside and their brother school, Shirley, commissioned surveys on sexual harm. A disturbing survey, really. Shirley Boys and Avonside Girls Schools. Widespread shot. sexual harassment, including groping. 21 instances of rape. We are sick and tired of these behaviours. These students have bravely shared their experiences in the name of change. Now, are we finally going to do something about it? Just quickly, what needs to be done to stop this behaviour? I'm back at Avonside after more than a decade. It's surreal. This school shaped me into the person I am today. When I was in high school, I encountered a raft of sexual harassment, but I never could have imagined trying to change the system. The Avonside students are doing just that. Me and a group of my friends sat down one day and realised that the level of sexual harassment that we were experiencing at school, on campus and out in the wider community was unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we had to get the school involved in doing something to combat that. We wanted to start a conversation with the survey that we could then realise the extent of the issue, um, prove it to people mm -hmm. in that we could get those changes happening. On the day, I kind of sat down and realised what a monumental thing it is and kind of the weight of people's experiences that had been disclosed in something that I helped start, so. Obviously, you're a principal, yes. but you're also a woman and a mother. Um, so how did these results make you feel? I felt really angry. There are so many ways in which victims are having to make changes to protect themselves, but that's not good enough. We need to see consequences. Girls need to see that people take it seriously. What did you think of Shirley's results? I suppose concerning was probably, you know, probably the main thing, I think, that, that that's not what life should be like at school. Shirley's participation was relatively low compared to yep. Avonside's. What I do think is there was probably a lack of maturity and a lack of uh, acceptance from the boys that this was a really important issue. I cried reading the stories of my friends and my peers who'd experienced just, like, unimaginably horrific things from talking to friends at other schools. I think it is a problem in all high schools, possibly some worse even than the results that came out in Havenside. This is the survey of sexual harassment at Avonside Girls High School. Students were asked, have you ever been sexually harassed? Respondents reported more than 5,000 incidents of sexual harassment during their short lifetimes, more than 10 per person. The worst incident included 21 assaults of rape or near rape. 25 other cases where consent was withheld. 26 instances of sexual assault within families. Groping, grabbing, 44 people. Somebody rubbing their genitals on you. It's really unfair. Someone said that they were raped by my boyfriend at my birthday party. <laughs> When I was only 14 and my boyfriend raped me and they felt that it must have been their fault. Isn't that just like the most heartbreaking thing? <laughs> like, of course it's not your fault. <laughs> it's a lot. <sighs> Melanie. Hello. How do these survey results compare to sexual harm statistics across New Zealand? I've got no reason to believe that anything's going on at Avonside 
that's any different than anywhere else. Could you please define sexual consent? It's often described as the free willing participation in sexual activity. It's not something that they're being pressured or forced into. Survey results showed a massive call for more consent education. So, what does consent education look like at Avonside? So every year nine and ten student goes through relationship sexuality mm-hmm. education, looking at consent in different contexts, so not just sexual, but um, in other all realms around alcohol, drugs, and even consent for social media. Listening to our students, they've really said, well, you know, you do do consent and you do teach it, but we want more. The reality is some schools don't teach sex education at all. Depending on who your teacher is, unfortunately, and depending on what school you attend um, and depending obviously on your family values and, and beliefs, not all students are receiving the same information in a, you know, really empowering way. When I went to Avonside, we were never taught about consent. I'm lucky I've always had one person I could talk to about sex. Hi. My mum. <laughs> hey, Liv. I found your old school uniform. Oh, 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 oh. That still fits. I don't have as many badges as Aurora. But they couldn't really have one saying bossy bitch, could they? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the 60s, there were some very weird attitudes. Girls were expected to stay virginal, whereas young men, they were allowed to have lots of sex and it was called sowing your wild oats. <laughs> that meant that you kind of got that off your chest, or not your chest really, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but any girl that had sex before marriage was a slut. I remember when I was about 11, and some guy came up behind me and reached inside my waistband and pinged my knicker elastic. I felt quite threatened because I couldn't quite understand what was going on, but there was no way I would have told my parents because there's that thought that you might have deserved it. Why do you think that you thought you deserved it? Well, otherwise, why would it happen? I don't think... We've progressed, really. In fact, I think it's worse now. So at the heart of the problem of sexual violence is a cultural problem around the ways in which our culture values gender, ethnicity, and sexuality, and the expectations about what sex is or should be. There's obviously concerns around what, what people are watching online. Um, this whole unrealistic world that they spend a fair bit of time in and and I don't think they quite understand often that some of their actions in the real life have real impact. If you don't talk to your children about sex, all they've got to learn it from is is pornography. That ain't real. That is, is about as far away from sexual education as you could get, but what else are they getting? Where else are they getting sex ed from? What do you think about our current sex education guidelines? So the guidelines are just that, they're guidelines. But whether schools take them up and act on them, there's a lot of room. Are we doing enough to address sexual violence? Absolutely not. We should be helping young people understand all of the issues around consent, around what's okay behaviour, but I don't think we should be leaving that up to chance. If you could ask the New Zealand government for one thing, what would that be? To strengthen our health and sexual education curriculum so that it teaches consent comprehensively and in a mandatory way. The teaching of consent isn't going to be the only factor that reduces sexual harm, but it's an important one in teaching young people, empowering them to understand their own boundaries. It needs to be compulsory. It needs to happen all the way through, through every single school in New Zealand. It needs to be at all year levels and every student needs to experience it. You know, if you don't have the education, the knowledge, the skills around that, the interpersonal skills, it can affect your whole entire life. I actually truly believe that what happened to me going through sexual abuse as a child and the path that I went down is is a direct result of there being no consent education at school. I spent almost 10 years in boys' homes in prison um, I'm also a recovering addict. Sexual harm has a effect on everything. As we were filming, 
Vision New Zealand protested against sex education being taught in schools. We both want children to be safe, but we have very different ideas of how to do that. Why wouldn't you want to empower your children with these forever lasting life skills? It's a no brainer. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. These students have been brave. We need to support them. Let's start a movement. We're looking for compulsory consent education in New Zealand. So this is your committee for change. Who's up for it? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> in 2021, we took part in the survey and we've been quite involved as a school in trying to push this consent education forward. When this opportunity came up, it was a way that you can actually try and make a change. We want to reach as many people as we can. You can have a video with you saying, I stand for consent because. It's such a nice idea. I really want people to feel like they have a comprehensive understanding of consent, what it looks like, how to communicate it. Even outside of sexual relationships, consent can still be applicable. And I think it's something that schools should provide in health. You got your mission? <laughs> Let's go. All of the ideas that we've managed to come up with in just one day gives me a really good feeling about what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> We're live. I stand for consent. I stand for consent. I stand for consent. I stand for consent. We stand for consent because we want people in our communities to feel safer. Because we as men can do better. Because it creates a culture of respect and equality. Because everyone has the right to govern their body. Dear policymakers, here are your people. Students, educators, survivors, advocates, parents, children. We're asking you to stand with us and make consent education compulsory in Aotearoa. Because our rangatahi deserve to be free from sexual harm, to be safe and respected. We stand for consent because all young people deserve to have this education, not just some of them. We stand for consent because we are failing our youth if we don't. We stand for consent. Do you?